Well hello there and welcome to my kitchen uh, for this Palm Sunday talk. Palm Sunday celebrates a time when there were huge crowds in Jerusalem. If you've got the internet you can get a flavour from Google and find videos of Palm Sunday celebrations in modern day Jerusalem. So different from today. For the first time ever anyone can remember the Palm Sunday celebration in Jerusalem has been cancelled. It's fair to ask why I remember Palm Sunday at such a difficult time when many are isolating alone. I shall try to answer that question as we go. First let's take a look at the circumstances of the day. It was in the run-up to Passover, arguably the biggest festival and holiday in the Jewish calendar. One commentator suggests that the population of Jerusalem was normally about 80,000, which is similar to the population of High Wycombe today. Most of the residents would have been out and about on the streets preparing for the festival as it approached. Passover is meant to be celebrated in Jerusalem with a family meal. For Jews who can't get there, the format of this special meal includes a prayer of hope that next year they will celebrate in Jerusalem. Maybe that's like putting off a birthday celebration or an anniversary celebration at the moment until a time when the family can be together. So, there would have been many Jewish pilgrims in the city. When Jesus is made to carry his cross on Good Friday, he is helped by a man we know as Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene was a city in what is now eastern Libya, that's on the coast of North Africa. So Simon was one of those Jewish pilgrims who had travelled from home to come to Jerusalem to celebrate this special festival. Historians estimate that the Jewish population of Jerusalem at least doubled at the time of Passover. In Jesus' day, Palestine was a Roman territory, subject to Roman law and government. The governor at the time was Pontius Pilate, that might be a familiar name, and he usually lived at Caesarea, which is on the coast on the Mediterranean. But he would have moved to Jerusalem for Passover, along with many soldiers. The military were there to help keep the peace during the festival, and of course they were adding to the numbers in the city. Pilate and his entourage would have arrived a few days before Jesus. The crowd would have gathered to watch their governor ride into the city on a war horse with much pomp and circumstance at the head of a column of disciplined marching soldiers. I hope you've read or listened to the reading for today which tells about how Jesus entered Jerusalem a few days later. And like an exam question, shall we compare and contrast Pilate's and Jesus' arrivals. When Jesus makes his entrance, there's no war horse, no well-drilled soldiers, but a ragtag procession of assorted followers singing praises to God and waving bits of the hedgerow with them. Some years ago, in the old St. Berinus building, I was preaching on Palm Sunday and I'd thought about those people who laid down their cloaks for the donkey to walk across. What do you think Jerusalem's streets were like in those days? Tarmac? Concrete? No. No, they would have been dirt roads with maybe stones, cobbles laid by the Romans. Certainly very dusty, 
People washed their feet when they got home. And no streets were walked by animals too. Donkeys, camels, horses, oxen. So added to the dust, there would have been a fair amount of manure. Would you have laid your cloak on top of that lot? That day that I preached, as a little sort of demonstration, I put my new red coat, the same one hanging behind me, I put that coat on the floor in the church and walked across it. The floor was a clean carpet, but even so, the action raised a few audible gasps in the congregation. And this, I think, is where Palm Sunday gets personal. I can imagine myself pulling a branch from the roadside and waving it about while I sing and follow Jesus and the donkey. But will I sacrifice my new red coat? Am I prepared to lay my coat in the dirt and monk for the sake of Jesus? That's why I believe Palm Sunday can definitely be personal if we let it. Because I can hear Jesus asking each one of us, will you join in or are you going to watch from the sidelines? He asks, will you follow me and my donkey? He asks, will you sacrifice your coat for me? He asks, what will you risk for me? Let's pray. This is a prayer from St Ignatius of Loyola. I'm sure you'll recognise it. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labour and not to ask for reward, except to know that I am doing your will. Amen. Thank you for listening, and be blessed.